Hello, my name is Joseph Lariosa of All the Time here in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, today I am here at the uh, Chop and Box uh, factory at uh, 47 31 North Cumberland in Norris, Illinois. It's a suburb of Chicago. It is my pleasure that uh, I was allowed to speak to the owner of this uh, chalk in box business. And uh, I have here with me attorney Gerardo Gerardine, who is the owner. Uh, Mr. Dean, uh, thank you for uh, letting me interview you. And can you tell us about yourself and about your business? Thank you for having me and, uh, and the, the chalks and boxes. So I am uh, Gerardo Dean. I come from the island of Samar, of the Philippines, specifically from the city of Calbayo. I am uh, a, a practicing attorney by profession in the state of Illinois. I had been at, uh, in the practice of law in, in the state of Illinois since uh, 2006. Um, initially, I was into uh, uh, real estate, um, other cases like uncontested divorce, immigration, but nowadays I concentrate in the employment-based uh, immigration. My clients are uh, mostly nursing homes, hospitals from uh, 15 states. Um, I process the the immigrant petition for the various healthcare workers, mostly nurses and therapists. Um, with that, uh, with that uh, modest uh, um, financial means, I was able to uh, advocate for for uh, the uh, uh, chocolate, the, the cacao farm uh, in our province in, in summer, particularly in Calbayo. That's the reason why now we have the chocolate shop. Uh, that's very good. Uh, that's a very good background uh, for you, but it looks like uh, from a lawyer to uh, a cacao uh, producing business. Uh, and talking about your business, what are the challenges of our cacao farmers uh, they face in the Philippines? Um, so when I started uh, the uh, cacao farm way back in January of uh, 2016, my sole purpose was just uh, to to support the government's uh, program to uh, to uh, propagate the cacao trees in the Philippines, and uh, I was particularly interested of the story of the Puente Espina in in Davao. So I thought maybe maybe it's a good idea to uh, uh, intercrop cacao trees with the existing coconut lands of my father because my father has uh, several uh, coconut lands so the idea was to to add income to the coconut uh, farms because I heard that with the fluctuating value of copras sometimes the tenants are not encouraged to to uh, process the coconut into copra because it was not worth it due to the very low price of uh, copra. It, it, it was a fluctuating price, so I thought of myself, why not intercrop it with uh, uh, cacao trees, so it will add an income. But uh, it was a long wait in order for the cacao trees to become, uh, to reach a fruiting state. How many years? Oh, um, since I have uh, grafted cacao trees, uh, the, the trees 
started uh, bearing fruits after 24 months. Oh, okay, two years. Two years, but it started really getting the, the volume in uh, the year of 2019. Mm -hmm. So, in, in 2019, that was when I really had a lot of cacao pads. We, we had a lot of harvest. So after I, three years? After, uh, in 2019. 2019. So I, okay. Uh, that was after, after three years. Four years. Four years. Four years. Um, so I, I told my farmer, okay, now you have, you have uh, a lot of cacao pads, then turn them into uh, a, a source of income. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, my farmer uh, uh, turned them into tableya. Mm -hmm. And we invited uh, chocolate makers to to uh, buy our beans. Some uh, chocolate makers from other countries uh, in Asia visited our farm, okay. and we also talked to other prospective uh, buyers within the Philippines mm -hmm. to to buy our beans. Um, so that was that was the idea, but uh, it turned out that. The, the the price of the cacao beans could not sustain the farm. The farm. Yeah, I found out that the the price of uh, a wet of wet cacao beans, the wet beans, was only um, twenty five pesos per kilo. Okay. And the dried beans, the price was. Uh, and continues to be uh, between 100 pesos to 150 pesos, and oh, yeah. that's only like two dollars. Two dollars. Yeah. So I told myself, if this is the price of of the the beans, if we sell it, because we cannot dispose of the beans by turning them into tableya, because mm -hmm. there's not yeah. sufficient there's no sufficient market for that. Mm -hmm. So it was a problem. So I realized at that point in time that the idea of uh, planting cacao trees uh, was not a good idea because of the existing market. How, how can a cacao farmer live with, with that price? Yeah, very small price. Yes, yeah, it would not even be sufficient to 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 buy for the gasoline of the grass cattle. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to to buy for the one sack of uh, fertilizer because uh, one sack of fertilizer at that time would cost 2500 pesos yeah. and uh, it could fertilize only approximately 100 trees. So I had, I planted 5,000 trees. And so, how many hectares is that? Oh, that's a total. My father has a combined uh, hectare of uh, 20, but uh, I was able to uh, to uh, plant uh, cacao seedlings in approximately 10 hectares. 10 hectares. Um, after I planted 5,000 trees, I continued to to plant every year. So okay. 2,000. 2000 uh, seedlings, uh, especially when when I my my trees matured, um, I sourced the scion from from my trees. So that allowed me to to have my own uh, nursery. Uh, I didn't have a problem uh, sourcing the the seedlings from other nurseries. I, I I produced them myself. So that was that was the challenge. I. It behooved to me that maybe I'll just forget about it. You know, I did my part. I spent money mm -hmm. to to uh, to buy cacao seedlings from Davao, from from Marikina, mm -hmm. because I I bought two two types of uh, I, I bought seedlings from two nurseries. One from ANC Nursery in Kalinan. I bought three thousand. Where's the Kalina? Uh, in Davao, Davao. Okay. Yeah, I bought 3,000 uh, seedlings of, of the four varieties, the W10, the PBC123, the mm -hmm. BR25, and the UF18. 
and then I bought uh, 2,500 uh, seedlings from from the Sampio Nursery in Marikina. So all these seedlings, I, I spent money to, to... How much to, is one seedling? At that time, I, I purchased them at 25 pesos okay. per, yeah, per, per seedling. So I, I, I brought them, I, I hired a trucker to, to, to bring the, the seedlings to Calbayo. That, that was in 2016. And then in 2017, the, 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 the congressman of Calbayo, uh, through, through a cooperative, disseminated uh, several thousands of seedlings. In 2017, uh, there was a project of our congressman to disseminate, um, I heard it was 50,000 seedlings. To, What's the name of the congressman? Uh, Edgar Sarmiento. Okay. So he disseminated through the, through CARPA, uh, uh, a cooperative. So mm -hmm. I got, my farm got 1,500 seedlings. And uh, so it, it was added to my, to my existing cacao tree. So I really had a lot. In 2019, I, I had a lot of mature trees and uh, at that point in time, I was thinking that there was nowhere for my farm, farm to become sustainable. So it was a challenge to me. That's why I thought of the idea of uh, setting up a chocolate shop in 2019. Um, I setting up a chocolate shop. The chocolate shop. Maybe I told maybe if I process it myself, then it could bring the highest value for my for my beans yeah. because I I have full control of all the process. Mm -hmm. So in twenty in November of twenty nineteen, I enrolled in uh, the uh, uh, Chicago Chocolate Academy, uh, the chocolate making. How many days or uh, weeks? It, it was it was uh, two weeks of uh, rigid Train. training with uh, with the Chef Yan Migold, a, a French chocolatier, mm -hmm. uh, with 25 years of uh, solid experience in in chocolate making and pastry. But then, after completion of the uh, chocolate uh, training. I told myself it was impossible for me to do it, considering that I am into uh, immigration practice. I cannot leave yeah. my my source of income. Mm -hmm. So that was it, until there was this uh, pandemic. Uh, June of uh, 2020, my teacher in the Chicago Chocolate Academy, Chef Yon Bicol, called me for a personal consultation. And uh, when I talked to him, uh, I again entertained the idea of setting up the chocolate shop. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, 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 encouraged, he, he, he encouraged me and uh, he, uh, he assured me that I, he, will, he, he will help me with the, with the chocolate shop. It, mm -hmm. I am really that interested. And uh, I talked to my wife, who was then uh, no longer working as a nurse. And uh, since we were not doing anything at the time, everybody was on hard lockdown. Actually, yeah. uh, if we can, uh, if we can recall, uh, the whole world was on a standstill yeah. in June of 2020. So, to me, it was it was. Uh, it was an opportunity because chefs in the caliber of uh, Chef Yan mm -hmm. would not be available for one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutorial. So yeah. we agreed he would, uh, instead of me, uh, he would train my wife, Sailin, mm -hmm. uh, to be the chocolatier. Okay. So from July uh, for 2020 and for more than Four months while everybody was uh, in the quarantine, <laughs> quarantine uh, the chef uh, went to my house and uh, uh, conducted a one-on-one -on -one, uh, rigid uh, tutorial, a chocolate uh, uh, tutorial with, with my wife. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, it's like uh, my wife. So uh, it's like uh, transferring to my wife uh, whatever knowledge he, he acquired in his 25 years of uh, being a cho chocolate chocolatier, chocolate maker. So that 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 training gave us the the confidence to set up uh, the chocolate shop. So that's why we we finally decided to uh, find a location and this is the location in Norwich and uh, opened the chocolate shop in July of 2021 after several setbacks in the construction and the permitting. Yeah. And you have no regrets? No regrets. <laughs> <laughs> now going back to uh, the Philippines, uh, you, you mentioned about uh, Congressman Sarmiento uh, distributing seedlings to farmers. Uh, is this the only government uh, activity contribution to the farmers, the seedlings, or do, 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 do they conduct training for the farmers? Um, I heard uh, because what I did, I was doing my my thing separately from the. Uh, programs of the Department of uh, Agriculture and the other agencies in the government. I heard the DNR and other agencies, the TTI, they have their trainings. They offer trainings to farmers. Uh, I heard about that, but what I did, uh, I sent my farmer to, to training to SIDAMI. SIDAMI is an association in, uh, in Mindanao headed by uh, Mr. Val Tutu. Okay. He, uh, it is where cacao, so-called cacao doctors in the Philippines train. Mm -hmm. So I sent my farmer to train in Sidami. I also uh, sent him to train in uh, um, MUD farm in Cebu to learn about organic farming. Mm -hmm. That's why now we don't purchase uh, fertilizers anymore. We we uh, we are 100% organic. We only use vermicast. We have 10 beds of uh, uh, we have 10 concrete beds full of uh, African night crawlers that turn uh, that turn uh, our substrate into vermicast fertilizers so uh, every every month we harvest like a hundred sacks and uh, use them use the vermicast uh, apply the vermicast to our cacao trees so that's that's for the can you recycle uh, vermicast uh, we don't vermicast is basically uh, vermi vermi is warm cast is the, the poop so vermicast is basically warm poop so, so it's like fertilizer. Fertilizer. So what to to to, to produce the vermicast, uh, we we gather we gather carabao manure. Uh, uh, let it dry and uh, uh, shred it. We have a shredder uh, from, from the US. I sent it to, to, to Colbayo. Shred it and uh, um, we also put in uh, banana uh, banana trunk. We we oh, yeah. uh, slice it. Also, kakawate kakawate leaves. So when we when we planted our cacao trees, we also planted kakawate trees oh, yeah. for for the vermicast. So this substrate, the 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 African night crawlers will eat them. And after eating, the they are turned into uh, poops, poops. Uh, the castings. We call that the casting. So uh, after two months, my farmer will the, the the worms will go down to where there are still some wet uh, so substances, and my farmer will will scrape off the top, which is already dry and is already the, the vermicast. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's how we harvest the vermicast. And uh, it's, a, it's, 
our main source of uh, fertilizer. In addition to vermicast, we also discovered uh, the the another discovered uh, the the another type of uh, fertilizer because vermicast is more on soil conditioning. So there's this other type of organic fertilizer we call the FAA. It's the fish amino acid. Okay. So and also the uh, um, so it, Kalbayuk is a coastal city. In fact, uh, our place Samar is one of the source main source of fish from uh, uh, from uh, Manila. From Manila. So fish dealers bring the the, the good quality fish to Manila. Manila. So my farmer would go to the first fish fish uh, market and uh, collect the the reject, and we we ferment the fish with uh, molasses for twenty days, and uh, the 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 liquid that comes out of of the of, of the fermented fish fish I mean fish and the molasses is the FAA. FAA. So we we apply that through spray um, to to the cacao trees. It's a source of uh, uh, protein nutrients to the to uh, for for the cacao trees, and uh, that is responsible uh, for the uh, continuous harvest of our cacao trees. Mm -hmm. Before we discovered that fertilizer, we, we would harvest only mainly from September to March, which is the peak season. Uh, you will, in, in the Philippines, you will hear from the cacao farmers that, hey, we, we mainly harvest from September to, to, to March, which to is March. the peak season. But with this FAA, year on. our trees, we, we harvest every two weeks, every two. all year round, no yeah. let up. Yeah. No let up. In addition to the FAA, we also use this other uh, organic fertilizer, a, the seaweed. So seaweed. seaweed fermented with uh, the molasses for 20 days. So it's also. Is that the gulaman? Yeah, the, okay. the one that uh, you, you that is that abounds in in, in the seashore. <laughs> in the seashore. So, like I said, we we are also a coastal area, so we we uh, we we let other other farmers collect them and uh, we pay them for their efforts in bringing the seaweed and turn them into organic fertilizers. So now we don't we don't spend. Anything that for much for, for fertilizer, and we have healthy uh, fruit-bearing cacao trees mm -hmm. that gives us bountiful harvest all year round. Mm -hmm. that's so that's that's. Uh, I wish I wish other farmers uh, will will do that because those are naturally occurring ingredients yeah. that 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 can be found in most of yeah. the places in the Philippines. They in, take advantage of them. Yeah, instead of buying uh, inorganic fertilizers for oh, how much? Now I heard it's two thousand, it's three thousand dollars per sack. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can only fertilize like a hundred a hundred trees. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really I, I wish I wish through this program mm -hmm. uh, farmers will 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 know mm -hmm. that there is there is an option yeah. to the high cost of fertilizer mm -hmm. yeah. and it is free it is free That's and right. and one more thing um, recently I heard about cases filed against uh, certain chocolate makers the the uh, uh, about cadmium I don't have heard you heard no, about no, cadmium. There is a controversy recently about uh, some chocolates having uh, uh, unusually high percentage of cadmium. 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 It's it's uh, it's present in the chocolate. Yeah. It is normally caused by the inorganic 
fertilizer <laughs> because in organic fertilizer they have ingredients mm -hmm. that uh, causes this uh, these minerals. So if if the farmer will use uh, uh, the the uh, vermicast Vermic fertilizer, vermicast is the earth's most powerful soil conditioner. Mm -hmm. The vermicast will condition the soil and remove these cadmium, uh, iron, and other unnecessary uh, minerals. Subs um, mineral. Substance, if not at least reduce them mm -hmm. to an acceptable, to 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 a desirable level. Yeah. So, so that's that's uh, that's it. and lastly. Because of, because of the mixture of molasses, the, the midges, the midges are the pollinators. What's the midges? Mid, midges. It is a, a tiny insect, okay. ti uh, similar, to, similar to mosquitoes, but, but smaller, smaller than the mosquitoes. They are the ones that pollinate the, the, the cacao flowers, oh, yeah? the, the cereals. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have, if flowers rely on bees to pollinate, the flowers of the cacao tree will rely on the midges to pollinate. That's like uh, the the bats. Yes. They pollinate flowers for durian. That's that's true. So, um, I heard of some uh, countries like Africa, they train the farmers to manually pollinate mm -hmm. the cacao flowers. <laughs> the, 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 apparently because of the, uh, not the, the lack of uh, poly natural pollinators, the midges. And you don't have much of midges if, if, if you use inorganic fertilizers or pesticide. Mm -hmm. You use pesticide, you, you, you shoo away this tiny insect. Now, if you don't have pollinators, even if your trees will give flowers, the flowers will wilt up, will die. It will not pollinate. It will not pollinate. <laughs> so, when we started using this FAA uh, mixed with molasses, my farmer tells me if before, whenever he visits the farm, he can still. Uh, walk around without a shirtless, without a, mm -hmm. a shirt. Now, now he must are. always have a shirt yeah. because of so much midges. midges. And because of that, most of the flowers that, that, that our cacao tree uh, produce end up being pollinated, pollinated because of the presence of pollinators. So these Factors one after another uh, is a result of the choice to 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 go organic, uh, economical. You have more pollinators, and lastly, we don't we don't need pesticides mm -hmm. because the tree is healthy. It is able to fight diseases, so we don't use pesticides. Other farms, uh, I see they they sleeve, they put sleeves on their battery-sized uh, cacao pad. When when the cacao pad is battery-sized, they they insert a sleeve. How big is the battery? Uh, as big as just like like, three like this one. Two, yeah, uh, yeah. They put they, they put uh, they put a sleeve. Because according to them, that will prevent the the pod from being infested by insects mm -hmm. to to prevent pod rot, which is understandable. But our farm, we don't we don't we don't put sleeves on our pods, mm -hmm. and they don't have pod rots. Mm -hmm. All this because we do organic. Yeah. So. Can you just imagine you buy cellophane to sleep the pods? That's another cost. Mm -hmm. The person who will manually put the 
the slave on each of the long time. It it is manpower, cost of yeah. manpower. Mm -hmm. So all of this, I wish, I wish through this program, farmers will really seriously consider yeah. the the uh, the organic method of uh, farming. That's good. And uh, how do your par farmers, cacao farmers, transport their cacao beans from? Kalbayog to Manila to Chicago. Okay, what we do whenever I have a need, um, we don't store beans here in in the U.S. because I don't want to uh, uh, rent a warehouse to store them. So whenever we are running out of the beans, I I ask my farmer to ship um, beans to to Chicago. We ship the beans through DHL Express. Uh, there are some. What, what about Federal Express or other? Uh, but about ship by boats. Yeah, I tried. I tried. I have inquired about that, but uh, it would take two to three months. Oh. Uh, your 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 cacao beans will will be. Uh, mixed will be put together with all sorts of uh, cargoes in 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 the ship, and uh, I don't mind about that because. What anyway, about the cost uh, of shipping through DSL compared to by boat? Well, the last time that I shipped cacao, it cost me like sixteen dollars and fifty cents. Per kilo. per kilo. Yeah, it's it's expensive, but at this point in time when I have not yet reached the volume to to fill a container, I think uh, I will have to live with that cost. But someday, perhaps when uh, my volume reaches such uh, a number that I could ship them. Uh, in one container, then uh, I will definitely ship them to container. Because How many kilos do you need for it to be placed in a container? Yeah, I estimate. I have heard of uh, the big chocolate makers uh, like Askinosi. Uh, I've heard that uh, uh, they stuff at least twenty sacks. In one container, and one sack is uh, fifty or forty kilos. So, forty kilos times twenty. So, that would that be the cost. yeah. Whereas when I ship, when I ship the beans through DHL, I ship only a hundred twenty kilos. In how many days does it take here? Oh, uh, seven days. Oh, only one week. Only one week, and uh, I have, uh, I am assured of the of the integrity of my beans. Uh, I am able to trace my beans from from the farm to the DHL because the shipment alone is <laughs> very easy. Easy, and uh, it goes directly to me. Doesn't yes. have to be stored in 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 warehouses. I see. And uh, what are the challenges that you are facing in your life? chocolate business in the chocolate business the challenges really is like uh, the the packaging for example I cannot I cannot buy uh, boxes for like a hundred pieces or 200 pieces whenever I order boxes it has to be by the thousands so now in my garage my my car is no longer in there. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the it's the boxes from <laughs> containing my my uh, boxes for chocolate boxes. You cannot hire. Uh, you cannot rent a warehouse. I can, but uh, since it still fits in my car garage, so yeah. I'm okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> my, my car doesn't complain. So. Yeah. That's also uh, how Bezos. Uh, Jeff Bezos started from the garage. Yes, that's it's good to know. Yeah. Now, uh, 
do you see a promise in your in your cacao in this cacao business? Oh yeah, it is really promising. It, it's so it's so good to to feel that uh, you have full control of how your beans is processed. Mm -hmm. um, one day you see your farmer showing you a picture mm -hmm. uh, of the patch harvested mm -hmm. and then after you see it being displayed mm -hmm. and uh, purchased and uh, those who, who, who try our product they return most of our customers who try the product they return because they really see in our chocolate bar the real, the real taste of a uh, single origin chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. One product, they return. Most of our customers who try the product, they return. Because they really see in our chocolate bar the real, the real taste of a uh, single origin chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. One where a, a chocolate bar that you know uh, that you can completely trace its origin. Nowadays that's, that's uh, what the customers want. They want to know the source of the beans of the mm -hmm. chocolate bar that they are eating. So we can definitely give them the information. Mm, that's right. And uh, will this uh, business of cacao affect your low practice? It does not, uh, fortunately, because uh, my wife uh, has agreed to, to run the business and with some uh, very skillful, competent uh, chocolate makers like Noel and uh, other help from other staff here, uh, Natalia, who is from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, so I am fortunate to be able to continue my practice. And I must continue my practice because this is just a starting business. It is not yet, it has not yet reached a stage when it is really uh, a profitable business. I still need to assist the business at this stage and we just opened last year so with that decision to open the chocolate shop uh, I, I realized that uh, I had more reason to continue with my practice okay. uh, Do you have the message, inspirational message to cacao farmers and cacao entrepreneurs like you? My uh, message to the cacao farmers is Try, try to, try to uh, make the most of your beans. Don't settle with uh, tableya. Learn how to ferment properly. If you don't have the volume yet, tie up with other farms so that you will have the volume to ferment your beans, because. To ferment the beans properly, you need to have at least 300 kilos of beans in one box to be able to produce the desired heat to ferment the beans. So, do it. And uh, trade, if you cannot produce them into chocolate, deal directly with a chocolate maker who will give you a price that will really uh, help you uh, maintain your farm. Don't settle with the price that you currently have in our, in our country because that price will not make your farm sustainable. Um, so yeah, uh, join forces with your fellow cacao farmers and uh, and uh, learn study if, if uh, there are so many people out there in our country like mr louis senna who is so selfish self selfless in his efforts to 
to educate cacao farmers how to how to uh, ferment the beans correctly don't hesitate ask them a form of group if you have like uh, 10 groups um, talk to your DTI so that the DTI or the local uh, DA can invite speakers like Mr. Luis Sena to, to conduct a seminar on how to properly conduct the correct post harvest of your cacao beans. That's very good. And how do you see yourself 10 years from now? Ah, 10 years from now, I see uh, myself finally uh, able to able to uh, retire from my law practice because really in 2016 when the idea of uh, planting cacao occurred to our minds me and my wife it was because we were preparing for our retirement Attorney Dean uh, what uh, legacies do you want to leave behind when you retire? Um, I want uh, to leave behind uh, a, a legacy when, uh, in which the uh, cacao farmers are encouraged to spend their time and resources in uh, uh, nurturing the cacao trees because they know that um, the trees when they bear fruits will really give them sufficient source of income an income that uh, will allow them to send their children to school an income that will allow them to pay the basic cost of, uh, of their household uh, if that happens the government will be able to attain its uh, roadmap a cacao, cacao uh, roadmap because uh, if if we will revisit the 10-year roadmap of the government it's a huge failure uh, the government wanted to achieve at least 100,000 metric ton but it was not able to do it uh, at most the 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 Philippines is able to produce only 40,000 metric tons, and mostly from Davao. So it basically has not changed the the capacity of the country to, to produce cacao substantially. In fact, as we speak, the Philippines is still a net importer of cacao. chocolate, chocolate. cacao. Even even the uh, the new big player chocolate maker Godel um, is importing cacao beans from other countries, from Nigeria, from from Latin America, because no amount of training, no amount of free in seedlings to distributed to, to really farmer. put will their their efforts into cacao farming if the farmers know that at the end it will not give them any income any income why would they waste their time, time? <laughs> they would rather they're better off working as a construction worker <laughs> or any any uh, minimum paying job that's just that's the reason why after 10 years you could not see a cacao farm flourishing as as envisioned by the roadmap. So uh, our farm in Calbayo, we were able to show that indeed cacao is gold. That indeed cacao can give income uh, to the farmer. My farmer uh, is able to send his uh, child to a Catholic college, mm -hmm. yeah. it is able to, to to provide modest income to the farmer uh, because we do it right. It is not too late, but it must start with the right, uh, with respect to the farmer. We must give them respect. 
we can give them respect if we give them the right price that they deserve for their beans. If we do that, our farmers will repay by producing tons of cacao beans. If that happens, if we give them the correct price, then without much effort from the government, everybody will be surprised the Philippines can achieve not only a hundred thousand metric ton, but More. even a million metric ton. Because it comes naturally from the farmer. We can produce that, but let's give them the right price. With that uh, message from uh, Attorney Jerry Dean, I thank you for uh, watching our uh, video, and and I hope uh, you learn a lot. Uh, on behalf of Noel, this is Joseph Chilariosa of Ola Time from uh, Chalk in Box Factory in Norwich, Illinois, suburbs of Chicago. Thank you. Hello. If you are interested in our picture, don't forget to subscribe below so all the time can bring you more news you can use. Thank you, and this is Joseph Gelariosa.